welcome back to the Kalix Services channel. I'm Thelma and I'm standing in our courtyard garden where we bring outdoor living indoors. About a year and a half ago, we featured the plants in the courtyard and you know a lot happens in a year and a half, especially if your plants are healthy and growing well. So today we're giving you an update on the courtyard, what has happened in the last year and a half, how things have changed and how things have gotten even better. So don't go away. Welcome back and thanks for staying. I'm sitting in my favorite spot here in the courtyard and it allows me to see all the beautiful plants ahead of me, which you will be seeing shortly. But what I'm going to do is start the tour at the lower courtyard, which is where guests to the home would actually start. And as we go through the tour, I'll focus on some of the maintenance issues that occurred over the last year and a half and how we dealt with them. And this is the entry level of the courtyard which welcomes you with a few potted plants and a swinging chair. But your eyes are drawn immediately to the upper levels, which is where we're going to go next. And this is what you see as you enter the main courtyard. It's used both for family relaxation and for entertaining friends. We've added this structure over the open section Half of it has transparent sheeting to prevent rain coming into the gazebo. It also has a flexible waterproofing sheeting that can be quickly rolled out to protect the entire area when the need arises. But let's turn our attention to the plants under the gazebo. And I'll start with the four large crotons in pots. They're more leggy than they were a year and a half ago, but that's understandable since they've been in these pots for over four years now. I've clipped some of the taller branches to encourage them to produce more branches. And they've responded very nicely. See the new growth here? I've also added a two inch layer of fresh compost and also apply a 2020-20 soluble fertilizer once per month to the crotons as well as to all the other plants in the courtyard. The ferns got a rather severe pruning a month ago to control an infestation of scale insects, but they are recovering well. This anthurium was featured in an earlier video as well as the other one on the table and so did the peperomia. This areca palm along with the other two in the courtyard increased quite a bit in size. There are lots of young plants. They are relatively low maintenance, really just watering every two to three days, fertilizing once a month, and removing the occasional yellow leaf. This area of the courtyard garden gets about six hours of sunlight per day, and the sun-loving plants, such as this Washingtonia, and these bougainvilleas, they are thriving. These bougainvilleas were featured in the repotting video and we'll release the update video in about two weeks. So look out for it. Here is one of our favorite fruits in the garden, the lovely Simmons avocado. We expect to be harvesting fruits for another three to four weeks hopefully up until late September. Mm -hmm. 
the sun has come back out so it's time to leave the sunny section of the courtyard and move into the lower light section where we have plants that are adapted to medium to low light condition and as i come up to my right there's a lovely example of a crinum lily same family as the amaryllis and it's nestled along with the anthurium same lighting conditions but it's nestled underneath large foxtail palm this palm has grown at least uh, two feet since the first video and we had to take it out of the original location because it was getting tall and top heavy it actually got blown down twice so where it is now it is very protected uh, from high gusts of wind and i don't think we have to move it from them and just to the left of the foxtail are two pots of asparagus ferns and actually this is the older pot that was hanging in the video you saw a year and a half ago it's got much too heavy to be hung so come with me to the upper level and to this at the beginning of this of the right side of the covered area we have a lovely pink medinella the two blooms on it and oh if you can ignore the damage caused by the slug this is a lovely bloom and the plant it's a young plant it's the first time it's blooming moving along nice collection natural looking of ground covers this is the Tradescante Sabrina we have coming out of this this uh, Migoni very nice vibrant cool color Ficus here was brought in for a demo, but it looked so good framing the walls, the way the chunks um, are shaped, that I left it there. It's doing fairly well. It does prefer a brighter location for it to fluff out, but it's doing well. It's adding that color. And most of the plants you see here now are the result of some of the videos that hopefully you followed. The Anthurium propagation videos gave us a lot of plants from both the taller variety as well as the short uh, indoor table varieties. So we are now developing quite a collection of anthuriums for our pleasure. The blooms uh, lift your spirit, they're so vibrant and they bloom continuously. That's another reason why we transform this area from a collection of quite a few plants into primarily an anthurium display area. And coming up are four lovely staghorn ferns. They're about twice the size they were a year and a half ago and have completely wrapped themselves around the materials to which they were attached. This plant is known as the lobster claw. It produces large red flower spikes in the cooler months of November to February but I see it's already starting to color. We remove some plants from the end of this section to accommodate more anthuriums, and we prune some of the branches from this Postela calipha to improve aeration. It really was getting tall, but it does add that splash of color at the end of this section. And I know you're curious about these carvings. Let me just point out that in the first video, there was a large aurelia here. And I said I was going to train it for it to get as tall as the house. Ah, I was wrong. That variety after a while just got very leggy and not very attractive. So it was replaced by artwork. Now, Don contributed three, three carvings from his collection. He's been keeping these um, carvings. I think these are over 40 years old. And they're genuine mahogany handcrafted by um, artisans in the Ferngully area. And I'm happy they've lasted this long to adorn our courtyard. This sago palm was moved from the main section as it had gotten too large for its perch. It grows very slowly, so it should be okay here for a few years. We just have to remember to stay away from its prickly leaves. This amaryllis, along with the others, will be subjected to induced dormancy treatment in a few weeks. 
going to be coming up here to some colorful plants. This hydrangea would prefer brighter light. It doesn't bloom much in here, but I'm keeping it for cuttings. The aglaonema leaves provide some color. It likes this low light and this lovely bird nest fern. It really glows in this dappled light. And I'm so happy that no birds have attempted to build a nest in it. And this calathea. I had it inside for about four months and it was looking a bit droopy. You may know that this plant could be temperamental if the humidity isn't high. So I brought it into this area and it seems to have taken on a new lease on life. Beautiful. I really don't have the heart to return it indoors, so I guess it will stay in this location for a while. We've added more hanging baskets. This is the lipstick plant, which we expect to bloom later in the year. And this is a really, really nice begonia. Very fast growing, very lush, healthy. Plus, later on in the year, we expect it to produce a shower of really beautiful light pink flowers. And this final area serves as a transition area for several plants. The heather plants, you remember, that were here as a low border, were attacked by small beetles and were subsequently removed. I tend to put plants that I have a special interest in in this bed where I can see them all the while. This clivia, for example, that I plan to propagate from, I have it here trying to figure out what is the best location for it, but it's already given me about seven small plants, so I think it's happy in this location. And standing at this bed, looking out, you get a peak of a section of the courtyard. I say a peak because from this area, the view is really nicely framed by um, the pink pandora blooms and other foliage plants from the upper level. And it really is a tantalizing view. You see how plants can be used to really add that depth to any space. You don't want to see everything as you look out. You need to be able to go around the corner and see what else is there. Let me retrace my steps and give you one last look at the trellis area. And I'd like to point out that the alamander and the pink pandora have grown so vigorously that they're now providing more shade for the plants on the trellis than they did a year and a half ago. Which makes this area very comfortable for demonstrations, as you may have noticed in many of our videos. So, to summarize, we've shown you some of the changes, the main one being the covered area. We've also explained some of the changes in the plant placements, those that got too large, such as the foxtail palm behind me, and that had to be relocated, as well as the plants that didn't do so well in this area. And one of them in particular allowed, opened up space that allowed us to put some really nice artwork there. And it's something I like. I think I will continue um, experimenting with a mixture of the plants and artwork in due course. Yes, there have been changes from 2021, but as you know, if you're working in the garden, there will indeed be changes and hopefully changes for the better. Um, I hope you find this version, although different from 2021, equally appealing. Now, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And before I go, I will leave you with one last view of the Calyx Courtyard. Enjoy!
until the next video, I am Thelma in the Calix Hotel Garden saying thanks for watching and bye bye.